When you're out riding on your e-mountain bike, you will get a puncture at some point. If it happens near home, you can ride it back and inflate it with an airline or maybe a track pump. But this trail side, you've got two options, mini pump or CO2. Which one did you choose? Well, today I'm helping you make up your mind. Right, first up, the mini pump. Now these are essentially just scaled down versions of the same pumps that you're gonna be using in your workshop back at home. They're pretty efficient, they're lightweight, I mean you can stick them in your riding pack no problem, and they're pretty much free to use aside from that initial purchase price. Now the way the pump connects to the valve can differ a lot on these little pumps. Some directly mount onto the valve, I mean you push it on, flick up a lever, and it's locked on. Some pumps will screw onto the valve, and some will have a flexible hose, lots of different options. Now the way that the air is delivered is simply by cycling that handle up and down, and they're gonna suit both valves, Presta and Schrader. The design of the mini pump can vary massively. Now you can get pumps that are gonna double in length, meaning that pump is literally twice the size. Some designs will blow both ways on the upward and the downward stroke of the pump, meaning the air is really efficiently coming out of the valve. You can get pumps that are pretty much are like mini track pumps that you can stick in your riding pack. You have a fold out foot and a T handle, meaning that you're gonna get super efficient with that pump in. Now efficiency can vary massively on these pumps. Some of the cheap pumps can take days to inflate the tires, whereas the more expensive mini pumps can actually double up as your day-to-day -day pump. You might even use it in your workshop. As for carrying the mini pump, well, there's lots of different options here. The idea of it is so lightweight, you can stick it in your riding pack and pretty much forget about it. If you do want to mount it onto your bike, you can get these little clips that'll sit along your water bottle cage, meaning you can carry it on your bike too. And this is a bad option. It's the sort of thing you can pick up at your local hardware shop for a few pounds. It will inflate your tires, but it may, might take a few hours. Definitely not worth skimping when it comes to a mini pump. Then there is, of course, the CO2 cartridge. Now, this is made up of the canister itself and the connector. You simply screw the canister into the connector. Once that's in there, it's gonna pierce the, the uh, canister with a little needle that's in this compartment. Then it's a case of screwing it onto the valve and dumping all that air in. The more expensive options will have a release valve, meaning you can dump that air in piece by piece, or some of the cheaper ones means that air is just gonna dump all at once as a one-shot only device. The idea of the CO2 system means that it's super lightweight and super compact. It literally fits in the palm of your hand, meaning that when it comes to carrying it, you simply put it in your backpack in a tiny little pocket. You can carry it in your race shirt. You can even strap it to your bike. There's loads of specific little carriers that you can put CO2 canisters in. Super lightweight, nice and compact. So let's take a look at the pros and the cons of the mini pump and the CO2. First up, the pros of the mini pump. Now the mini pump has an infinite supply of air, meaning that if you get one, two, or 20 punches on your ride, you're always gonna have a supply of air for you and your mates on that ride. And it's better for the environment. It's not a single use item. You can use the mini pump over and over again, whereas the CO2, well, that's a one-time use only. Another pro for the mini pump means it's quite easy to regulate that pressure. Every single pump, you can regulate it with the CO2, you blast all that air in and you can have a rock hard tire. Nice thing about the mini pump, you can do half a pump, quarter of the pump, really easy to get that perfect pressure. Right, so that's all the pros about the mini pump. Let's talk about some of the cons. Now the cons of a mini pump mean sometimes that you can't actually seat a tubeless setup. If you were to crash maybe, or pull the tire off the rim and have to try and reseat it with a mini pump, it's pretty much impossible. Unless that rim seal is super tight, you're not gonna be doing that with a mini pump. It's quite easy to get carried away with a bit of overzealous pumping, especially if you're using a tube setup on your mountain bike. Sometimes with a direct mount pumps, you can start twisting and pulling that valve around, meaning that there is a possible risk you could damage that valve and therefore get another puncture. And fixing two punctures in a row definitely isn't fun. Then there is, of course, time to inflate that tire. CO2 versus a mini pump, while the CO2 will win every time by a big margin. If you're in a race scenario, simply banging that CO2 cartridge into your tire, inflate that tire in seconds, this will take minutes. Some of the pros of the CO2 system is actually the size of the whole system. It's really small, meaning that you can put it in your riding pack and it's not gonna weigh a lot. Also, some of the multi-tools have a CO2 connector, meaning that you don't even need to carry the connector. All you're gonna need is a canister to inflate your tires. Another pro is the rapid inflation. Now these are perfect in the race scenario or when you want to get that tire up to pressure pretty damn quick. Say for instance on a winter ride when you're getting cold and your mates are waiting for you, there's not a lot of faff in. Also it might give you enough pop to seat that tubeless tire on the rim pretty quickly. Cons of the CO2 system, 
Well, it's a one shot only device, meaning that you have one go at inflating your tire. So for instance, if your valve was leaking or the connection wasn't very secure, it was leaking, meaning that you're gonna have to waste that canister. You can of course carry more canisters in your bag, but therefore that means more weight in your riding pack. And these canisters aren't the most environmentally friendly thing either. If you think about how many punches you've had over your time, that's a lot of canisters to be sat around in the trash. And obviously cost, it's quite an expensive way of inflating your tire. One of these canisters costs roughly around a pound each time you use it. If you add up all those punches, that's a lot of cash. If you're fixing a puncher with a CO2 canister, you definitely need to use a protective sleeve or at least a set of gloves because these things can get super cold in use. I mean, you can literally freeze burn your fingers to that canister. And lastly, kind of like doing a job twice if you inflate a tire with CO2 because CO2 is for emergency use only. If you get home, you need to dump that CO2 out of your tire and reinflate it with air. Well, which one should you choose, the CO2 or the mini pump? Well, both of these price-wise are pretty similar, especially when you go to add all those extra canisters in over the years of use versus the long use of the mini pump. Well, when I go for a ride, I choose both. If I'm doing something quick, the CO2 will win, but I never dump the mini pump. That's my fail-safe option. Let us know which one you guys ride with in your ride impacts. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. And don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and find us on social media too.